I'm Rachel Starr. So, um, schizophrenic. I've been able to give some, like, speeches recently, and it's been really, really cool. Um, one at a recovery mental health facility, another for NAMI, N-A-M-I, um, National Alliance of Mental Illness, um, Indianapolis is, um, convention um, some other smaller ones but it's been really cool because I have been able to go out and um, talk to other people with mental disorders friends family members healthcare workers um, at one point I got to speak with some police who are working on making a program for identifying people with uh, mental disorders you know when, when they're having breakdowns versus being on drugs kind of thing um, it's just been really really cool and interesting um, also Forgot to talk about my book, Little Broken Star, a um, a very sim simple version of, I mean, a very simple book about coping skills for uh, people with mental disorders, especially schizophrenia, and it's actually kind of more so a kid's book, but anyone can, can do it, but um, it breaks it down, you know, about dealing with hallucinations and depression and different things like that. So I've got to be giving these, um, these speeches, and... You know, each one's been a little bit different. I kind of, you know, gauge it on who the audience is. And um, I guess the hardest thing, it's easy for me to educate people who know nothing about mental disorders, right? And, and I, that's easy for me. Um, I think it's harder for me to talk to people who are in the healthcare field, um, who it's kind of like they're behind the looking glass kind of thing. Um, and a lot of them do care, um, or they just find mental health interesting, and it's almost like you're a lab rat, um, which, hey, whatever works. Um, but it, it's a little harder for them because it's kind of like I'm coming from like, okay, here's the real life person who's going through all this stuff, you know, who needs the help. But the hardest, um, I guess the for me, the weirdest speech to give and talk to people was other schizophrenics, other people, you know, who, who have schizophrenia, some of them having it, I mean, longer than I've been alive, who've gone through so much more. And it was weird because I'm like, here, you know, I have to go and share with them my story. And I'm sure most of them have a lot worse story than me and know so much more. So it was, um, it was hard. Uh, but I kind of, you know, I did my thing, kind of like what I do in my videos. I went, I, I talked about some of my coping mechanisms and stuff like that. You know, I really wasn't sure how it was going to go. And overwhelmingly, um, people who, who were at the, uh, you know, the, the conventions, the things that I, uh, the places I spoke at, you know, would come up to me afterwards and you know, some of them were going through things that I can't even imagine or have been through things that I went through, like been through ECT and stuff, but been through it multiple, multiple, multiple times throughout the years. And they're coming to me and overall I think they just wanted to know that it was going to be okay. And that I think is the most purest thing of what anyone, you know, with a mental disorder, that's all we want. <laughs> Uh, we just want to know it's going to be okay. And it's it's a very simple, I think a very pure thing, that e you can't say, hey, yeah, no, it is. And it, it's something that, that was hard for me, I think, every single time. Because even though they would word it differently, that's what they were wanting to know. Hey, I need I need to know that I'm going to be okay. That this is going to work out. That, that you know, I'm going to get to a better place. And it's something that I, I, I can't... I can't say, oh yeah, no, it's totally going to work out for you. You know, I, I, that's the thing that I struggle with constantly, you know, am I going to be <laughs> okay? I don't need to be great, uh, you know, and the uncertainty of what tomorrow holds if I go psychotic tomorrow and never come back. And, and it's scary because there, there is no okay. Um, it really is a take it day by day situation um, and don't focus uh, I, someone's talking to me and they kept saying well Rachel what happens you know in the future in like 10 years from now and you can't take care of yourself and I'm like, I, I, I'll deal with that in 10 years <laughs> I I because I don't have an answer I don't like hypotheticals because anything could happen um, you know 10 years ago when I was 21, I didn't ever think it was possible for me to live to 30. God, not even like my mid-20s. Uh, so I don't like hypotheticals because I don't know where things are going to go. I really think um, with mental disorders, 
it's good to think about your future, obviously, but don't get so caught up in the negative side of it, like, oh God, what's going to happen if this? What's going to happen if this? It's important, you know, I mean, I, I'm aware of it that, yeah, there is a chance that my parents might have to seriously take care of their adult daughter um, for a really long time, and I don't want that to happen. But the truth is, it very well could. And if I sit around thinking about that depressingness, I mean, it's bringing me down right now. And I can't. And I don't think anyone with a mental disorder or even like, you know, any type of sickness like that, you know, where you're thinking, there is no, there is no better. Okay, I don't think you can concentrate on that kind of stuff. You really got to focus on taking it one day at a time. Focusing on what makes you happy and what do you want to do now. Think about like a close future, as in like this month, six months, a year. And to the question, am I or is it going to be okay, it's completely up to you. You know, I have no control over my schizophrenia. You, you guys, I've, I've let you know in my videos, um, the getting help stuff, I've had to get a lot more help this past few months because I started having really intense hallucinations and urges um, to drink bleach uh, and other really violent, um, really dark things that a lot of it I don't, I don't even want to talk about so much um, or I'm not ready to yet, I guess, because I'm still in the, in the middle of it. Um, you know, and I don't know that it's going to be okay. I don't know if tomorrow things are going to get like a thousand times worse. Um, they were, you know, they're talking about making me, um, not making me, I'm sorry, uh, me going through ECT again. If things, you know, it's going to take something drastic, maybe. Um, so I don't know that it's going to be okay. I, I don't know. But all I have control over is today, right now. All right? I can kind of plan for tomorrow. I can kind of plan for the rest of the week. Doing things that make me happy moving towards things that make me happy. But no, if I focus on 10 years from now, no. I, because I don't know where that's going to go. Could it go horrible? Absolutely. Could it go great? Absolutely. <laughs> so, the answer to the question, then, is you'll be okay if you choose to be. And I think the answer to my question, um, my own personal question for am I going to be okay, yes. And sometimes I have to answer that question every single day. You know, every single hour, making it through the, those hard times, those depressive times where I'm wanting to do bad things, where suddenly it's just like a wave, you know, just hitting me. And I have to be like, it's going to be okay. Here's what I'm going to do to make it through the next hour or the next minute through the night. God, through the night. Here's what I'm going to do to be okay through tonight. I'm Rachel Starr. Thank you so much for watching. And it's up to you on if you're going to be okay. Make the decision that, yeah, you are. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, I'm a schizophrenic. Ah, ah. Toto. We're having some serious dog issues.